Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation and today we will be learning about the different dynasties in China, part 3. But if you haven't watched the part 1 and 2 of this presentation, please click the link below in the description box and help me grow my channel by clicking the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, and comment down below. So let's start. Tang Dynasty from 618 to 907 CE. The Tang Dynasty was founded by Li Yuan after he revolted against the Su Dynasty and he took the title Emperor Gaozu. The Tang Dynasty is considered as the greatest dynasty to rule in China and perhaps the mightiest in the world because Europe at this time was plunged into the Dark Ages after the fall of Rome. Another of China's greatest contributions to the world was printing using movable blocks invented by Feng Tao in the year AD 932. The Tang era printing press would be surpassed only by Gottensberg metal printing press in Germany centuries later. With many books in circulation, more people learned to read and write, even the lower class could obtain information. Thus, more poor people but deserving scholars passed the imperial exams and rose in the society. The spread of information caused knowledge revolution. The world's oldest printed book, called the Diamond Sutra, and the first newspaper called the Peking Gazette was published during this time. Song Dynasty from 960 to 1127 CE The chaos in China after the collapse of the Tang Dynasty led to the breakup of China into five dynasties and ten kingdoms. It was during this time when once again one warlord would rise into power and collect at least some of the various states into a unified China under the leadership of Emperor Chao Guangyan of the Song Dynasty. His reign title was Taizu, which means the Grand Progenitor. The practice of foot binding among Chinese women became more common. The constant attack of the state of Jin in the northern China necessitated the Song Dynasty to relocate their capital to the south. This was the beginning of the Southern Song Dynasty. Some of the notable achievements of the Song Dynasty include the invention of pound locks that enabled bigger vessels to pass in the Grand Canal. This canal or artificial river is the longest man-made canal in the world, longer than the later Suez and the Panama Canal. Another achievement of this dynasty was the use of the first paper money, the first Chinese permanent navy, and of course, the invention and use of gunpowder for warfare. The gunpowder, together with paper, printing, and the compass are the four greatest legacy of China, but truly, there is so much more to credit China with. Just when the Song had become accustomed to their new state in the south, the nomadic Mongol tribes had been assembled under the leadership of Genghis Khan, who threatened to dismantle the Song dynasty. Yuan Dynasty from 1279 to 1368 CE The Mongol rule of China begun after Genghis Khan and his yellow horde of horsemen warriors overran the North and Central Asia. His real name was Timujin, but was given the title of Genghis Khan, which means universal ruler. His grandson Kublai Khan continued his empire, defeated the Song Dynasty, and became the emperor of both China and Mongolia. Due to the vast Mongolian empire, it was split into four khanates after the death of Genghis Khan in 1227, to be ruled by his sons and grandsons. The Golden Horde in Russia and Eastern Europe, the Chagatai Khanate in Central Asia, the Iot Khanate in the Middle East, and the Khanate of the Great Khan in China and East Asia were the Yuan Dynasty. Kublai Khan began the Yuan Dynasty, the first non-Chinese dynasty to rule in China. Under Kublai Khan's reign, the Yuan Dynasty made China great in the eyes of the world. He fostered education, culture, and foreign relations with the West. In the year 1275, Marco Polo, the famous Venetian traveler, visited his court and brought back tales that steered the Western interest in the riches of the East. After the death of Kublai Khan, the dynasty faced numerous internal problems, and in this time, the pro-Chinese had seized the opportunity to stage many rebellions with the goal of overthrowing a foreign ruler. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.